Okay, so thanks so much for watching this video. I'm so excited to talk to you today about the Bible and continuing in this Bible series on Bible forgery. So you're gone here out there as you're witnessing that some people think that um, there were a lot of forgeries to the Bible. And so that got intermixed with um, intermixed with things that were true and, and other things were not true, or maybe the whole thing isn't true. And so we're gonna talk about Bible forgeries today. I'm so excited. Let's go ahead and dig in. Hey y'all. It's me, Cindy Fessler, your fellow Christian warrior, here to help you know more so you can share more and grow more of God's kingdom. So if you haven't done so already, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Welcome to part three of Were the Books of the Bible Forged? Here again, we talk about Tim Chafee's argument against Bart Ehrman's book, Forged. Challenge number three, modern scholarship. So Bart Ehrman, the guy that writes the book, often alludes to scholars, some scholars, or current scholarship, and gives the impression that his conclusions are backed up by the latest and greatest research. While he provides a reasonable amount of endnotes, most of these do not deal with his conclusions, which are usually vastly overstated. Instead, the notes provide documentation for quotations, and many of them point the reader to works by Ehrman himself and other critical scholars. Rarely does the knowledge of the vast amount of scholars from the conservative perspective, which sufficiently handles the objections raised by the liberal scholars. As such, Ehrman regularly leads his readers to believe that every scholar, or at least the vast majority of them, is in agreement with his line of thinking. All right, so let's look at the case of Daniel. While his book focuses on the New Testament primarily, Ehrman also talks about uh, some Old Testament books. And, and Ehrman made some bold assertions, concluding the authorship of Daniel in an effort to show forgeries existed even in the Old Testament. Human books from the ancient world sometimes contain forgery, writings that claim to be authored by someone who did not write them. This is certainly true of the Hebrew Bible. The Christian Old Testament, the book of Daniel, claims to be written in part by the prophet Daniel during the Babylonian captivity in the 6th century BC, but there is no way it was written then. Scholars for over 100 years have shown clear and compelling reasons for thinking that it was written 400 years later in the 2nd century BC by someone falsely claiming to be Daniel. The key word in this paragraph is compelling. To whom are these arguments that allegedly prove late authorship of Daniel compelling? So he says all this stuff and then just doesn't back it up. Primarily to the liberal critic who already rejects the existence of a god who can foretell the future, right? So Daniel was able to tell the future. So it'd be really nice for them to be able to reject him and say, oh no, see, he was writing later on after these events already took place. So Okay, here's the account from Daniel 5, the writing on the wall. King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for thousands of his nobles and drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem, so that the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines, might drink from them. So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem, and the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines drank from them. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods, little g-gods, of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale, and he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking. The king summoned the enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. diviners. Then he said to these wise men of Babylon, Whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck, and he will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, and they could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. So King Belshazzar came even more terrified, and his face grew more pale. His nobles were baffled. The queen, hearing the voices of the king and his nobles, came into the banquet hall. May the king live forever, she said. Don't be alarmed. Don't look so pale. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. In the time of your father, he was found to have great insight and intelligence and wisdom like that of the gods. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, appointed him chief of the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and divin diviners. He did this because Daniel, whom the king called Belteshar, was found to have king keen mind and 
knowledge and understanding and also the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel, and he will tell you what the writing means. So Daniel was brought before the king, and the king said to him, Are you Daniel, one of my exiles, the fa- one of the exiles my father, the king, brought from Judah? I have heard that the spirit of the gods, that's little g, gods is in you, and that you have insight, intelligence, and outstanding wisdom. The wise men and enchanters were brought before me to read this writing and tell me what it means, but they could not explain it. Now I have heard that you are able to give interpretations and to solve difficult problems. If you can read this writing and tell me what it means, you will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around your neck, and you will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered the king, You may keep your gifts for yourself and give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. Your majesty, the most high God, gave your father, Nebuchadnezzar, sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. Because of the high position he gave him, all the nations and peoples of every language dreaded and feared him. Those the king wanted to put to death, he put to death. Those he wanted to spare, he spared. Those he wanted to promote, he promoted. And those he wanted to humble, he humbled. But when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was deposed from his loyal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven away from the people and given the mind of an animal. He lived with the wild donkeys and ate grass like the ox. And his body was drenched with the dew of heaven, until he acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign over all kingdoms of earth, and sets over them anyone he wishes. But you, Belshazzar, his son, have not humbled yourself, though you knew all this. Instead, you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. You had the goblets from his temple brought to you, and you and your nobles and your wives and your concubines drank wine from them? You praise the gods, that's little g, gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which cannot see or hear or understand. But you do not honor the God who holds in his hand your life and all your ways. Therefore, he sent the hand that wrote the inscription. And this is the inscription that was written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Parson. And here is what these words mean. Mene, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persian. Then, at Belshazzar's command, Daniel was clothed in purple. A gold chain was placed around his neck, and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain, and Darius the Mede took over his kingdom at age 62. That's Daniel 1 through 31. Daniel 5, 1 through 31. The people that are in agreement with him are the people that want to be in agreement with him, that want to believe there isn't a God that can predict the future. The hypocrisy of critics is on full display when attacking the book of Daniel. They accuse the author of being a terrible historian for calling Belshazzar the king of Babylon in Daniel 5, 1, uh, when Nabonidus was the actual king. Yet, Nabonidus ruled as a co-regent with his son, Belshazzar, whom he left in charge when he retired to the oasis of Tima in the Arabian desert. Consider that Belshazzar ordered, offered Daniel the third highest position in the kingdom if he could read and interpret the writing on the wall. This is in Daniel 5, 1, famous story, this king... Uh, sees this writing on the wall and he says, Daniel, can you interpret it? So, and King Belshazzar asks Daniel to do this. If this was the second century forgery, then how would the forger know that Belshazzar could only offer Daniel the third highest rank in the kingdom, since he himself was in the second kingdom, was second in the kingdom? Under Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel had been made second in command, and the same is true with Joseph under Pharaoh. The author of Daniel had first-hand knowledge that Belshazzar could not offer Daniel the second position. At the same time, the critics claim Daniel 11 could not have been written before the events described because more than a hundred precise details are spelled out exactly as they occurred. Here's a dilemma for the critic. If Daniel was such a terrible historian and forger, then how did he accurately record more than a hundred details in succession in Daniel 11? Yet this accuracy is one of the major reasons the critics attempt to redate the book to the second century. They don't believe prophecy is possible. But if Daniel was indeed written in the sixth century BC, as Jewish and Christian scholars believe for centuries, then God revealed specific future events to Daniel long before they occurred. How cool is that? For more than a century, biblical scholars have refuted every critical argument against Daniel. I happen to find these solutions to be far more compelling than the anti-supernatural complaints of the critics. 
This highlights the nature of the battle. Since I believe the Bible is the word of God and that God is capable of revealing the future, then I can accept Daniel as written and believe it was composed in the 6th century BC. But as an agnostic, Ehrman does not accept the supernatural and must explain the evidence in a way that fits his worldview. So he ignores the arguments that are to the contrary of his position rather than dealing with them. The Bible testifies to Daniel's life and ministry as a prophet in Babylon during the 6th century BC. Ezekiel was a contemporary of Daniel who was also taken captive in Babylon. He mentioned Daniel as a godly man and compared him to Noah and Job. See Ezekiel 14, 14 and 20. Later he said of the king of Tyre, Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. This is no secret that can be hidden from you. Ezekiel 28, 3. And Jesus called Daniel a prophet in Matthew 24, 15 and alluded to at least three passages in the book. The fact that Jesus called Daniel a prophet and referred to prophecy contained in the book settles the matter. Daniel was a prophet and his book is not a forgery. No watertight arguments have been raised against the traditional view and the majority of the complaints are based on anti-supernatural bias of the critic. The author of Daniel had inside knowledge of the workings of both the Babylonian and Medo-Persian Medo empires and was acknowledged by his contemporary Ezekiel Please watch part four, which is the conclusion of this series, where I provide Tim Chafee's final reason why Bart Ehrman's book Forge does not prove that the books of the Bible were forgeries. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I am so excited that you stuck to it to the end, and I appreciate that. And please do smack that subscribe button. Check out the next video.